That isn't just the sound of the all-new 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLC being put through its paces. It's the sound of innovation. The innovation behind one of the most advanced SUVs on the road today. With multiple driving modes, a suite of intelligent drive systems, and a technology-filled cabin that sets new standards in modern luxury. This is what innovation sounds like. Now, discover what it feels like in a 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLC. Some equipment described as optional. Hi, I'm Stunning Stella Cheeks. And I'm the Enigma Aaron Klein. And this is Not, Not Your, Your Demographic. Demographic, a feminist wrestling podcast. Shockingly, those exist. <laughs> <laughs> Too sexy up top? Too sexy. Too sexy. <laughs> so we just watched SmackDown, so we're going out of order because we couldn't get the mics to work earlier. LOL. LOL, LOL, LOL. <laughs> they work um, now. Hey, we think. <laughs> we think. <laughs> uh, how are you? I'm good. Uh, I voted today, so yes. I'm fucking great. I'm, I'm so going to vote. Glad. Um, I think I'm going to vote tomorrow or Thursday. I'm working from home tomorrow, and Thursday's my day off. So one Smart. of those two days... I'm going to vote. Smart. Very Get smart. Get it out of the oh, way. We should put the uh, list up of the LGBTQ judges on the Tumblr. For oh, yeah. people who are, like, in this or area. in Illinois. Yeah. Um, Ooh, sirens. Sirens. Uh, my, uh, Michael sent me a list of all the judges who had been rated by the LGBTQ bar associations and, like, associated associations because judge races make no sense to me. And yes. everyone's like, yes to everything, which is not good. Yeah, not That's great. That's how you get change in the judicial system is that you vote out research. bad judges. So do that. So if you're in the Illinois area, we can give you a list of LGBTQ friendly judges or not friendly judges so you can vote no on them. <laughs> great. Um, also, if you hear random cheering, it's because uh, the people upstairs, uh, our next door neighbors and Nick, are upstairs watching the Cubs game. So if you hear random like, ah, or oh, or whatever, that's why. <laughs> Probably disappointment. <laughs> so far, they are losing. So, <laughs> womp, 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 womp. Uh, other than that, I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. No, nothing notable to talk about. <laughs> Fantastic. No news is good news. <laughs> yeah. This week, I'm having a Halloween party. That's right, you are. Um, and I have two Halloween burlesque shows. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just the norm. Normal. Just. Dripping and dressing up like Brie Bella. <laughs> Regular old week for me. Regular stuff. For Halloween this year, I'm going as Miss Elizabeth from WrestleMania 7, so we'll both have wrestling <laughs> costumes. So <laughs> stupid. We're stupid. We'll have to get a Not Your Demo Pod picture, I obviously. Mean, we will, obviously. <laughs> um, what wrestling shirt are you wearing? I have on my Macho Man uh, zip up, and I have my Nikki Bella Fearless hat because it's my new favorite hat, and I my wear it like every day. Fucking Nikki Bella shit hasn't come yet. I really gotta call them and be like, yo. Where my shit at? Yeah, seriously. Especially if you already were like, yeah, hello. Hello, where are you guys? Give Send me, me my, my things. Um, I'm wearing my Stardust shirt because I think that Cody Rhodes had a really good week. Good. He was on TNA in the main event, and he was on Arrow this week. Yeah, that's right. And hilariously, he was on Arrow as a bad guy who was a drug dealer selling a drug called Stardust. <laughs> Of course he was. That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> um, his role wasn't huge. Um, like, he was the main antagonist of that uh, episode. But, like, you know, all those episodes are, like, the team trying to figure it out. Right, yeah. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he did a good job. Good for him. Yeah, I thought he did a really good job, actually. So, good for Cody. Good for Cody. Also, he had a baller moment in TNA that we'll talk about when we talk about TNA. So, cool. I'm wearing my Stardust shirt, because cool. I don't have a regular Cody Rhodes shirt. <laughs> I only have they a Stardust They don't make shirt. Cody Rhodes shirts. They, they only just make, make Cody, Cody shirts. shirts. Yep. <laughs> Cody and Brandy Rhodes shirts. <laughs> I mean, I'm down with that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I started watching Westworld. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's terrifying Ugh, everyone keeps but telling it's me how super good, good it is but it's so scary it's one of those yeah. like this could totally happen 
Oh, things. yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, Evan Rachel Wood is super good in it. I really like her. Also, Jeffrey Wright. Ugh, I love Jeffrey Wright. And mm-hmm. Anthony Hopkins and Ed Harris. Ugh, it's so good. I love Ed Harris. He's the best. And, oh, my God, what is her name? Um, she was in Interview with Vampire, Thandie Newton. It's a good show. Good. Uh, good news. Got any, got any news? Well, uh, I can't, literally can't keep track of who all is suing TNA anymore. <laughs> there are so many people. Lots of people suing TNA. Lots so. of people suing TNA. R.I.P. TNA, I guess. Uh, Billy Corgan is coming for that company. Like, he, but he wants the company. He doesn't. He just wants Dixie out. He wants the company. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's. I feel like if anything is going to happen, Billy is going to wind up with the company and it's going to get rebranded. I hope. That's like best case scenario. I completely agree. I think that it would be the best thing for the company. Like. Dixie just keeps running into the ground. Like, why, why do people keep bailing Dixie out? I don't get it. Because like, they f- they want the wrestlers to have a job, and they care about the people who work there, and they don't do it for Dixie, which is I weird. assume. It's weird. I don't know. Uh, that. Uh, the daughters of... Yeah, I was just about to say that. One of the Von Erichs and uh, Hulk Rick Hogan, Hogan and uh, Roddy Roddy Piper's daughter and are Diamond Dallas Page's daughter. Yeah, that's right. Are starting a are in the beginning stages of starting a wrestling company. I mean, it probably won't even get off the ground to be honest. But <laughs> like, it's interesting that the four of them are coming together to do that, and like, yeah. it's Strange. smart of them to like capitalize on the fact that all four of their fathers are legends and are very famous in the wrestling world but it also like why why, why yeah, but are, also why? why why are you doing this mm. what a weird thing for you to decide to do <laughs> yeah it's super bizarre yep mm-hmm. no new page in alberto del rio drama not this week <laughs> that i that i have seen it for least. once uh, we did discover that Paige is still on the banner on WWE's website. Yeah, if you hit WWE Superstar, she's still on the banner. And none of her stuff is on sale except for the stuff that would be on sale, like, because it's old stuff, not because, you know. Yeah. So. But, like I was saying earlier, too, she also has six months of recovery, so, like, why? And she's a high merch seller. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why sell that for cheaper than you have to? <laughs> I have tons of her fucking merch. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I have a koozie and a wallet. Things, high traffic use. I use them all the time. I thought about buying a wallet. They don't have any women's designs anymore. All oh, I meant a koozie. I thought about buying mm. a koozie. Honestly, yeah. next BOGO, oh my god, everyone's going to hate me. I'm going to buy a Charlotte shirt, and I'm going to buy a Roman Reigns shirt. No! <laughs> Boo! Look, my dreams have convinced me. Are you going to buy a Seamus shirt? Well, no. He only <laughs> has, he only has that Seamus 515 one. Though it's on, like, super sale, it's only, like, Five dollars, so I might buy it for like a sleep shirt. No, <laughs> don't wear that in my presence. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. If you were in my dreams, speaking of, I had another dream about another wrestler. Yeah, but it wasn't a sex dream. <laughs> um, Charlotte and Sasha had a hardcore dance battle <laughs> instead of a, a Hell in a Cell match, <laughs> and it was like with crews, so they each had like crews. <laughs> And, like, in a very stereotypical way, Sasha was, like, had, like, the more, like, cool hip-hop crew. Of course, yes. And then Charlotte had an Irish step-dancing crew. No. (laughs) No. I swear to God. Oh, my God. I swear to God. Oh, and then there was a moment in that I was in the dream just, like, I guess, like, refereeing this dance battle. Um, (laughs) And at one point, I remember telling... I can't remember because it was a week ago. I can't remember if I told Charlotte this or I told Marty Scroll this, but I was I basically was like, you guys should team up for your dance group because you're both like hot and evil. <laughs> <laughs> so in my dream, I had Sasha and Charlotte and Marty Scroll. Nobody got naked, but it was fucking a cool dream. That's legit. I had a dream <laughs> with Maria Kanellis in it the other night. Ooh, were you just like touching her hair because it's no. the most beautiful hair? Unfortunately, it was a stress nightmare and she was in it. And she okay. was like, I am the first lady of professional wrestling and I've come here to kill you. I wish. Okay, when I have stress nightmares, I have one kind of stress, or two. There are two very distinct kinds of stress nightmares that I have. I am late for a flight and I cannot catch it. And no matter what I do, I can't get there on time. Or I'm fervishly packing everything I own and I cannot pack it fast enough. 
those are my two nightmares. Like, that's it. That's all that happens. I'm, like, stuck in a cycle where, like, I can't leave my house because I can't get to the airport. Or everyone around me is very calm about the fact that we are packing and no one is doing anything. And I'm like, we need to leave now. (laughs) We need to get out right now. (laughs) Which has happened in my real life. When Michael and I moved from our first apartment into our, like, we we had a roommate for a while. Into our nest. Into our nest. Into our solo apartment together. I, I started packing very early and I was like, I'm really worried that we're not going to be packed in time. This really worries me and I have nightmares about it all the time in like my real life. And he was like, it's fine. Everything will be fine. It was not fine. It was a lie. It was not fine. <laughs> it was not fine. We were like packing. We overnight packed. Like the time that we moved out of that house, like that was the kind of packing we did where it was like I packed all night because Michael didn't pack anything. And then the day of, we had to like have everyone that was helping us move, help us pack our kitchen. So I've like lived this nightmare before. And so when I get really stressed out, I still have this nightmare. And in this nightmare I had last night, Maria, I was packing and like trying to get all of my things into these boxes. Like, why will no one help me? What? I need to be out of this house in an hour and nothing is back. And Maria Canellis was there and just standing, looking very disapproving. And that was it. There was, like, no further interaction <laughs> with her. She just looked very disapproving. Like, I cannot believe no one else started to pack before this. And I was like, right, Maria? I'm saying. Come on now. <laughs> so also no one got naked. But <laughs> unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, any other news? I can't really think of anything. Um, I can think of stuff, but it will tie into the things that we're talking about in the promotions that we talk about. Okay, fantastic. So, let's talk about those promotions. Spin the wheel. What you want to talk about first? Um, let's start with TNA because that's the only thing I didn't watch. Ugh, so hateful. Not because I didn't want to, because I voted. Okay, whatever. Oh, also, here's a quick sidebar. My voting machine broke down while I was using it today. (laughs) (laughs) Part of me was glad that it was me, because it's like, I'm always going to vote. Like, that's not something that's going to stop me from voting in the future, so I'm glad it was me. But at the same time, I was like, what the fuck? I got three pages (laughs) into our, I got three pages into our 15-page ballot on an electronic machine, and I kept trying to click next, and instead of clicking next, it kept selecting and deselecting my votes. (laughs) And I was like, why the fuck is this happening? I struggled with it for like three minutes and then I just stood up and was like, can someone come help me please? And they had to void my whole ticket and I had to like confirm that the whole thing was voided and they like popped my card out and then they had to shut the machine down because it was not working and I had to move over to another one and start again. Yikes. I was like, ugh, democracy. Uh, anyway. Democracy. That's funny. Anyway, TNA. Anyway, TNA. Oh, I bought a Lucha Libre uh, Christmas ornament. Cute! Yeah, Hazel has a bunch of them. They have so much they Lucha Libre stuff. They have so much good Lucha stuff there. I know, and every time they get stuff in, either I get a text from somebody who works there, and I, I worked there the other day because I'm doing like random holiday help, and I was like, so, Dave, what do we got in that's Lucha? And he was yeah. like, well, we got salt and pepper shakers, we got this, we got Sick. that. And I was like, great, on my lunch break, you know where I'll be. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so, if you like Lucha Libre stuff and you're in... Chicago, go to Hazel. It's the best. <laughs> what are we talking about? TNA. TNA. Okay. Um, so with TNA and Raw this week, I was just, you know how you have weeks where you're like, I just can't, I can't consume enough wrestling. And then weeks yeah. where you're like, Fuck watching this. wrestling feels like a chore. Yes. I, I felt, I had this, I had both of them this week. Like in the yeah. beginning of the week, I was like, yeah. And I watched uh, Lucha and I watched ROH and I watched NXT and I was like, yeah, I love this. And then when it came time to watch TNA and Raw yesterday, I was just like, oh my God. Murder me. I can't, I can't do it. So I kind of like I fell asleep during Raw like six times, and I would yeah. just wake up and then rewind to where I like <laughs> left off. But then I would just fall asleep again. So like I have this very hazy view of what happened in Raw, <laughs> and then I just kind of had TNA, TNA on in the background when I got ready to yeah. go to work. So like these are very general notes. I mean, right. I stopped and watched the things that were important to me per what everyone does. Yeah. Um. So TNA opened with uh, Cody Rhodes in the um, ring giving his like impassioned like I'm I made this decision and I'm here for the belt because like being heavyweight championship or champion is the only thing that matters blah blah and then Eddie came out and they were like baby face baby face baby face baby face baby oh, face God. baby face I'm a good guy I worked really hard oh you're a good guy you worked really hard baby face but they did a good job yeah um, but there was the baller moment that happened is when uh, Eddie said something like uh 
who are you or something or what do you want and then um Cody Rhodes went on a very like old school Ric Flair type thing where he was like well I'm the Brandy Rhodes pleasing impact crashing oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but, cool, but it actually worked and then he said Cody and then moved the microphone away from his face so nobody could hear it but then very obviously mouth Rhodes yeah and then um the like the internet kind of blew up and, and then Cody sent out a tweet that was like uh he sent like a gif or something that was like the lawyer's face when they're like freaking out about what I did but realize I said it off mic and they can't do anything about it. <laughs> and I was like, that's baller. It is baller. Cody, you're the best. Good power um, move. <laughs> yeah, for real. And then that got interrupted by Lashley being like, I'm going to get you. I'm Lashley. Oh he won his um, Bellator fight. Did he? Uh-huh. That's, hmm. that's what I heard, I think. I never, I didn't check on it. The only but time I heard I that Bellator. he won his Bellator fight. Yeah, the only time I watch Bellator is when Mike has to work those, or Michael has to work those events, and um, uh, he didn't. So I worked with uh, one of the caterers in this past weekend, and the bartender knows that I, I really like wrestling, and he likes wrestling too. And he was like, "Oh, did you hear about Bobby Lashley?" And I was like, "Oh no," and then we just talked about it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> he was like, "What do you think about Goldberg?" And I was like, "I don't care. I don't care." <laughs> <laughs> um, but he interrupted and was like, whoever wins, I'm going to murder you, basically. Because okay. Bobby's number one can, or Bobby, the following match was Moose versus Bobby for who was going to be number one contender. Right. Bobby obviously won. Obviously. Um, it was a, a pretty good match, though. And I don't know. It's so weird. I loved Moose in ROH and I loved him live. But, like, just, like, something about him on TNA is yeah. not gelling for me. There's and I love Lashley and everything that Lashley's doing now. So, like, I'm glad that he won. Yeah, there's just there's some kind of disconnect with Moose, yeah, and I like, work. but can't it it wasn't there, and it's, it's not just TV because it wasn't there in our way. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's almost like his personality has been dubbed down. In I don't know. TNA, I don't know. It's really weird. Or maybe he really needs a manager. Yeah, it's true. Maybe he. But then like I see him at uh, AAW and he's great. And yeah, he's but personable. It, but AAW like those small indie different. shows are different because they're like you know it's intimate. Yeah, it's intimate and like. Moose is often paired with somebody who's, like, funny or fun. Yeah. So, like, that lightens the mood. True. That's a good point. I don't know. I still like him. It's just, like, yeah, a yeah. little bit weird. Yeah. Um, there was a backstage segment with the Tribunal <laughs> where um, they were interviewing. They were like, why did you beat up the Hardys last year or last week? And, you know, they were like, oh, because Billy Corgan, he does not think that we're tough. We're so tough. <laughs> or whatever French people say. <laughs> That's um, a pretty good French accent. <laughs> Thanks. The character that I do at TeslaCon is like a ridiculous French person. Perfect. And I have the worst French accent, and then I just like dramatically like sigh and drape myself over things. Perfect. <laughs> this year, I've decided that I'm going to do dramatic readings, poetry readings, with a beret on. Because <laughs> we're like in Paris this year. If people want to know what TeslaCon is, just Google it. You ever been to a Ren Faire? It's like that, but it's steampunk, and I'm one of the like actors in it. It's weird and dope, okay? And I'm this weird French vampire bird. We don't have to talk about it. Burn. <laughs> yeah, so the story I feel like that was a weird add on to no, the end of the that. storyline is that like the I'm part of this like evil faction and the leader of the evil faction is this like witch that turned all these ravens into humans and I'm one of those people. Oh, that actually I'm, makes like, a lot of sense. I'm like three hundred years old and like very apathetic about being a, a human. That makes a lot and my, of sense. My, char my character's name is Aubergine, which means eggplant in French, because when it came time for me as the character to pick my name, I was like, I don't know, what's a ridiculous human word? Aubergine, great. Because <laughs> I'm just very, like, I'm very filled with uh, ennui, and I, like, am, like, just a dick. <laughs> which is a great character, because my other character was, was, like, saying. this, like, weird werewolf lady who was, like, ba like our whole group was I'm basically... I'm a werewolf lady. <laughs> no, but in I used to be part of this faction... Where we're like werewolves or whatever, but we all got killed off, which I don't know why. We were the most popular faction. But basically, we were a bunch of like Borats. Like, oh. We had terrible accents and full like prosthetic prosthetic makeup, and we just go around and be like, hello, everybody, we're weird wolf people. I eat dog treats in front of people. I don't know. I get really into my characters. <laughs> Anyways, I found a bunch of poetry about birds written by like fifth graders, and I'm going to read them very dramatically in no. my French accent. Oh my God. I am a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, if you're in the Midwest area and you want to see this, you can go buy a ticket to TeslaCon. It's in November. It's in Madison. I'll post pictures of me. <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh, my friend Jackson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the tribunal was interrupted by one of those um, video packages of, like, the hackers. They're called chaos. Yes. Um, 
<laughs> and then that was followed by Fact of Life with Eli Drake, and it had uh, the, like, faux set again. Um, it was weird because there was, like, dubbed over clapping and stuff, um, and it was with Aaron Rex, and so, like, Eli, even, like, the carrot charisma of Eli Drake couldn't, like, carry Aaron Rex. Yeah. What happened? I don't How know. How did that happen? I, like, I, I really love Damien like, Sandow, and now I don't care for Aaron Rex at it's all. It's like once he was given a belt, it, like, took away his character. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Uh, yeah, it's very disappointing. I don't know. I don't know. I also don't think he's just a good straight baby face. I think. Yeah, I think that he really needs some kind of like big opposition, and I think it needs. Yeah. He needs to be booked in a mid card role to feel like a main eventer. Right. Which is weird. Like I, I can't think of anyone else who's like that. Yeah, I, I can't either. Anyways, it was interrupted by EC3, where EC3 was like, "Hit the button, Eli. I'm gonna kill you." <laughs> I love this feud between them. I love it too. I think it's a great idea, and they're like a good pair for each other. Mm -hmm. They're I at agree. equal character levels and at equal wrestling levels even though eli has been used in a lower card position than ec3 like they do have very similar like wrestling abilities which is great yeah i like it um then it Your was hair looks really nice today by the way thank you um it was jeff and matt with their dope entrance with rebby um but jeff was like didn't have lazy face paint. Didn't have any what is contact. His deal lately? So he's like still broken, or he's so brother Nero, but he's like not committing to it, and it's pissing me off. It's so stupid. Um. So then the tribunal came out, and they were like, "Oh, we are a tribunal, whatever." Um. And so they're then, still tag champs, right? Yeah, okay. it was a tag t uh, champ match. Okay. But the Hardys won, and then Chaos interrupted, and then beat up the tribunal while the um the Hardys just watched. And Jeff Why? looked confused, and Matt looked like he was, like, getting off on it. He was like, yeah, <laughs> doing that thing that he does with the weird. Um, it's orgasmic. Yeah, basically. Also, he, his face was, like, full of blood because he, like, bit one of the tribunal's hands. Because <laughs> he's Matt Hardy, and he's the best. I can't wait to see him. Um, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, and then there was the cutest backstage segment with Allie where Allie was looking in the mirror, and she was like, Miss Maria, I think that you don't treat me very nice, and, uh, no, that's stupid. Um, Miss Maria, I think I've been doing, like, a really good job. Oh. <laughs> it was so cute. And then Braxton Sutter came up, and he was like, hey, Ellie, uh, I just wanted you to know that we all, like, I was talking to some people, we all know that, like, that wasn't your fault, and you're doing a good job, and, like, we just don't want you to feel bad about yourself or whatever. And she was like, oh, thanks, Braxton, that's so nice. And then Laurel Van Ness was like, hey, Braxton, uh. and then she was like, Ellie, go somewhere else and be my valet or whatever. And she was like, oh. <laughs> and then Laura was like, we should work out sometime to Braxton. And Braxton was like, uh, <laughs> awkward. There's another chaos video, and they're like, we're here, whatever, we're chaos, who cares? Um, Fair. La Lashley and Cody had a backstage segment where Lashley was like, if you win tonight, I'm going to kill you. And Cody was like, whatever, I'm Cody Rhodes. Great. Who cares? Um, then there was Maria and Allie and Laurel in the ring just doing a promo, and Maria was like, you know, it's not my fault that I lost this, and it's not my fault that I've I've lost control of the knockouts, and I just really think that you, and she pointed to Allie, you owe me an apology. And Allie was like, what? I, I didn't do anything. And she was like, yeah, you're awful, whatever. And then Allie finally broke. Finally. Like, you know what? You're not very nice to me. And, blah, blah, blah. and then Maria and um, Laurel beat her up. And then Maria got really close in her face and was like, you better learn how to wrestle because next week it's going to be you and Laurel. So next week, Allie has, like, a match. Cool. Good, good. So we'll see if they let her actually wrestle. Sweet. Um, uh, Tyrus and Shira had a backstage segment. So Tyrus is fixing because he's the fixer, Shira. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but then I called that number. Did you call that number? The, what do you mean? The one no, that, did you? Yes, I did. Is it goes, funny? No, it goes directly to, like, a Google Voice voicemail, like a legit voicemail. But I, not funny like the famous B one. No, not funny at all. Like a legit like leave a voicemail if you need a problem fixed. And I just like panic hung up, hang up because I was like, well, I was not expecting this. Oh no, it that's was not really fun. It was really weird, and I was just like, did I dial the wrong number? And I double checked it and was like, no, this was the number that that's they. That's not fun. It was really weird. Like they didn't even have any kind of like outgoing voicemail. It was just like lame. You have reached this number. Leave a message. Like ah, ah, no, hang on, abort. <laughs> But it was, uh, she, and then it was Shira versus the Miracle. Shira lost, so I don't know how Tyrus is fixing anything. Miracle's fuck? music was back, though. All the music oh, was back. That's good. Um, good. I love Mike Bennett. I just love everything that he does. Um, 
DJ Z and Spud had some promo about Team X Gold, whatever, who cares? Who cares? Um, and then it was Eddie and Cody. Uh, the match was really good. Uh, lots of back and forth. I think it wasn't as long as I expected it to be for like a main event. They did a lot of like replays of matches during the like like they basically replayed all of Gail Kim and Maria's match from last week and then Moose and Lashley was the first match and then they basically replayed the match later in the show weird which is like a, a thing on the bottom that said earlier tonight weird. so I expected that Eddie Edwards and Cody Rhodes would have had a longer like more story told match but it was pretty quick I thought huh interesting but anyways Cody lost but then shook hands with Eddie because, you know, whatever, he's a good guy. And then, um, you know, he was in the ring and everyone was cheering for him. Eddie had left. And then Maria came out and threw Brandy Rhodes into the, the stairs and started mm. beating her up. And then Cody came to save her and then Miracle came out. And uh, so Miracle and Maria were on the uh, were up by the Tron. And then Cody was with Brandy by the stairs. And <laughs> Maria goes, there's only one power couple. That's us. <laughs> And that's how it ended. So that's legit. we're going to get a Brandy Rhodes, Cody Rhodes, Bennett, um, and Miracle Feud, which I think is going to be dope. Wait. <laughs> Maria Canellas Bennett. Oh, okay. And Miracle. Yeah. Okay. You got it? Yeah. That sounds good. I'm excited All about right. that. I want to see Brandy wrestle. Chris Hero trained her. I know. Which is great. I'm into that. That's super cool. Um, I, you know, as always, I thought this episode TNA was pretty good other than the weird, like, the weird like replays yeah raw style there was like not that much wrestling on tna this week and lots of like story building yeah so i mean that does make sense i mean it happens yeah and they i mean they tape all at once which is probably why they set that up that way so that they're not fucking their performers over to have to wrestle well they tape like in one week yeah they don't tape in like one day but yeah 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 you're right um okay what do you want to talk about now spin the dial uh, Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. Did you watch Ring of Honor? I did watch Ring of Honor. What? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's I crazy. Did. I know. I did watch Ring of Honor this week. Uh, I know that next week is the match, or the this week, the one that will be up on the website next week for us to be able to watch, is the one where Dalton Castle and Colt Cabana tag team together. So I will also be watching next week. So look forward to that, I guess. I had a moment where I was like, I started to watch NXT, and I was like, no. I don't know, watch ROH right now. Yeah, it was a pretty good episode. Yeah, I don't care for what's what are, what are their names? Taylor, uh, Shane nom, and Taylor. Yeah, nom de plumes of discomfort. Those guys, I just it don't was like cool them. To watch, I, it is cool I like to War watch. I like War Machine. War Machine and Shane and Taylor because the four of them are giant. They're giant. It's cool to watch them Sh- all Shane fight. Shane and Taylor aren't as good as no, War they're Machine. not. They're not. And like there was just enough stuff where I was like, this is not. It's not botches because it wasn't like oh this just fell apart or like oh you're just not it, it was just like this just isn't executed well a yeah. couple of times like they did that they hit their finisher and uh i don't know which one is shane is which one is taylor Me, but i can't tell war machine apart either. yeah uh, one of them like they went to set one of the war machine guys up into their finisher over that chair and it was just like go whoa 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 yeah. we're gonna grab this guy and like really you can't even do your finisher like that is ridiculous also those guys are so big that they can't roll under the bottom rope and one of them got stuck under the bottom rope and i was like guys you know better you, you're tall enough to go over the top rope like don't 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 do that <laughs> i didn't just, notice that uh, it made me i immediately noticed it, it was like guys i come didn't on. i didn't used to like war machine but i really like them now. i've really come around in them because they're they it's just, just impressive to watch them wrestle. I agree. it's just entertaining like i'm never gonna buy a war machine shirt and i'm never gonna be like war machine but like it's impressive to watch them wrestle yeah i completely agree what do you think of the bullet club promo in the beginning when they were like we're gonna steal all the gold i mean it was good because it's that's what the bullet club is that's like their whole thing is that they're like the smarmy bad guys who were like we're better than you and we're gonna prove it because we'll have all of this gold so i'm like interested to see where that goes I don't really care about Hangman Page. It's Neither did the really audience because really Adam, Adam Cole gave him some like credit and then the the audience started cheering like, you suck, Page, or something like that. Yeah. And Adam Cole just stopped and goes, wow, not a lot, a lot of love to hang for Hangman, Hangman Page. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, I did appreciate Adam Cole's man bun. It looked I very mean, good. I mean, Adam Cole is so hot. He's so hot. He's, He's real so hot. hot. <laughs> there was a six-man tag between a bunch of the top prospects from years past and yeah. the cabinet. The cabinet... I think it was Patrick uh, 
or Patrice Coleman said like he He's called somebody promo. a jive turkey and yes. then somebody on commentary thinks Steve Crano was like I can't believe he said jive turkey on television I know <laughs> I was like everybody calm down it's so weird they're like kneeling thing I hate it I really hate it it's because they're clearly supposed to be bad guys and it's clearly supposed to be like fuck this dude for kneeling and I'm like I'm yeah, all about shitty. Colin Kaepernick. If you ha- do not follow me on Twitter, you might not know that, but I'm all about that shit. So it was weird because it was, it was like, you're supposed to hate these dudes because they kneel. And I was like, fuck Ring of Honor for making fun of Colin Kaepernick. I'm all about the cabinet now. Yeah. <laughs> Even though going into it with Patrice Coleman's promo, I was like, fuck the cabinet. <laughs> but as soon as it was supposed to be like, oh, we hate them because they kneel, in it. I'm in it to win it for the cabinet now. <laughs> Wait, you like them because you're supposed to hate them for kneeling? Yes. I think it's really obnoxious that, like, they are heels because of this. Like, So this now is... you want them to win because you want people to be mad that they're winning. Yes. Because that is Well, a... they did win. I know. And I was happy about it. <laughs> the coolest part of that match, I thought, though, was when the three top, top prospects, they set, I think it was Rhett Titus, up in a, a tree of woe. And then they went to the other three corners of the ring, yes. and they did a three-way across the ring, coast-to-coast drop kick. Yeah. That was fucking cool. Yeah, that was fair. That cool. was really cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the cabinet one. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. The Halloween commercial with Dalton Castle and Mark Briscoe. I tried to find a video of it so I could put oh it on God. our Tumblr, and I can't find a video of it, but it's the best commercial of all of commercials of all time. I wish that you guys could see how big my eyes got, because, oh, my God, it was amazing. It was so good. It was so good. Honestly, go for find it just to watch it. It was what so good. What are you going to go as? What a damn boy. <laughs> what a damn boy. What are you going to go as? <laughs> Basically, Dalton Castle dressing up as Dim Boys, the, the Briscoe brothers, and Mark Briscoe dressing up as one of the boys of Dalton Castle's Peacock Boys. It was so good. It was fucking great. <laughs> I love the, uh, the Briscoe. I don't... Which Mark. One? Mark Briscoe. Jay Briscoe's the really hot one. Mark Briscoe's the one with, with no, no teeth. teeth. Okay. And yes. the, the, the yellow, yeah! One. Yes. So Mark Briscoe ducks beneath the camera and then slowly <laughs> rises wearing the boy's costume. And I was just like, dead. You killed me dead. That you was killed, so good. I can't, I'm so mad I can't just find a commercial of it. Like, <laughs> That's so I'm going to tweet ROH and be like, can you just release that, that spot with Mark Briscoe and Dalton Castle because the world needs to see how fucking brilliant it was. I'm going as one of them boys. <laughs> So fucking smart. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> the main event was Silas Young versus Jay Lethal for um, number one contendership. Yes. Oh, no. Because it doesn't matter because they're both wrestling anyways. Because Silas Young is wrestling was is wrestling for the whatever. They're both, like, f- going for the belt. Yes. In mm-hmm. some fucking way. Mm-hmm. It's so hard to s- I think keep it, track of how ROH does stuff because some of their stuff is on TV. Some of it's not. Yeah. The storylines are very loose. Like, it's yeah. hard to keep track sometimes. Even when I've like I've been watching it week to week now for a while. I think uh, the idea was that whoever won the match wound up in the number one contendership for the belt at the next big thing. I don't remember what it was though. But it's, Silas Young is fighting or did fight for the belt somewhere. Anyways, it just I don't think it was televised. Oh, okay. Who knows? Anyways, Who Adam knows? Cole is on commentary. Adam Cole's really good at that. Yeah, um, he is. Think of how Jay Lethal wrestles and how Silas Young wrestles. It was that match. Yeah. Uh huh. I feel like it was a very predictable match. Yes. But it like it wasn't bad. It was just no. Like, and you know what? Jay Lethal's really grown on me. Honestly. Me too. I completely honestly, agree. The shaving his head and also like he looks so good with shaved head. I like I like Truth Martini a lot, but Jay She's Lethal, better alone. Jay Lethal on his own right now. Like I I gravitate to him a lot more. On I his completely own. agree. Did you see that uh, Truth Martini got married? Oh, good. Yeah. He looks like a completely different person. I don't know him, person. but like. Every time I hear an interview with him, I'm like, I'm worried about that guy. He uh, looks like a completely really? different human being. It is very bizarre. Did he shave his hair? I don't think so. It was like slicked down and back. It. I was just like, what? What do his eyeballs Ooh. look like? i never seen him without the glasses. It, it, I literally can't even describe it. He looked like a completely different person. It, it was so weird to be able to see his whole face. And like he was so cleaned up. It was so bizarre. Yeah, he was getting married. I know, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I agree. I think that Jay Lethal is much, has like really grown on me as a solo person. And like I, it's the same with Silas Young. Like We hated Silas Young at first. And now I'm like all about Silas Young. I love him. I think he's great. 
Yeah, I do too. And I think his heel work is like, it's very basic offensive, but it's not actually offensive. Right, exactly. And like we said too, they've done a really good job of shaping his storylines where it's not like, oh, because I'm the last real man that I get all of these great accolades. It's like, he's kind of like the, he is a bad guy. He's a heel because he's the last real man. But they use it effectively where like, oh, you think that he should win because he's the real the last real man, but then oftentimes like gets kind of humiliated or like He looks ten Trump years older than he actually is. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Maybe fifteen years older than oh, he actually is. Oh, not fifteen years old. That, how old did you think he was? Forty seven. Oh, see, I I knew that he was like in his late thirties. Yeah. He but, looks old. Yeah. Um, I would agree with that. But it's great. Lethal Lethal won and then uh Ky- or um Adam Cole came down to be like, oh, and then Kyle O'Reilly came out and just started beating the beating shit. Beating the shit out of him. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I like that Adam Cole is not facing Kyle O'Reilly for the belt um, right now, and he's, like, focusing on Silas Young and Jay Lethal, mm-hmm. but, like, there's this, like, thing brewing. Right. It's good storytelling, and it's a good way to, like, set stuff up coming up. Coming up. Let's talk about Lucha. Yeah, Lucha. It opened with a backstage segment with Puma and Vampiro, um, where Vampiro was like, hey, let me give you some advice. And Puma was like, I'd I would rather, rather die. die by Mil Mortis's hand than live by yours. Well, okay. <laughs> what? What is it about Puma this season that is so unappealing? Like, do you feel that way? I, like, I don't. Everything about Puma in his backstage segments this season, I'm like, I'm, I'm Is just... it the talking? No, it's not the talking, because, like, I see him talk, and, like, I have seen him talk in uh, New Japan. Yeah, but it's not the same character. Yeah. You've seen Ricochet talk, but now you're, we're seeing Puma talk, and Puma's talking a lot. Yeah, I, th- I think it, I don't know that it's necessarily that he's talking, it's just that this character, like, isn't as good when it talks. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, I agree. It's, I don't think it's him but that I he's doing But I still think he's a doing a good job. job. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. I don't think it's that he's doing a bad job in any way. It's just that this character is not being written well anymore. Honestly, like, the most I compelling storyline, I think, right now in Lucha Underground is everything happening in the worldwide underground. I would agree with that. Absolutely. I think that in combination with Sexy Star. I think yeah, that this, like, she's having good stuff going on, too. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that. And the Matanza stuff is really good, too, but like we, it's predictable. We know right, what's right, going right. to happen. So it was uh, Dario's Dial of Doom. It landed on Killshot, so it was Matanza versus Killshot. Yes! I, like, I loved how it started, where Killshot was like, fuck you, I'm taking you down. Yes, me too. Um, like they we had knew, a great match. We knew Monta- like we know Matanza was going to win, right? And, it, and yeah. then we say that, but like one day it's gonna, there's going to be like a huge upset, and it's going to be like, Joey Ryan wins the belt. <laughs> I would die! <laughs> <laughs> um, but I thought it was a really good match. I thought Kill, Stru- Kill Shot looked really good. Yes. I think these like He's been great. these matches have shown like even though Matanza wins every time, he everyone looks really good in them. Yeah, I agree. They're not just like you know raw style squash matches. Yes, I agree. But then at the end of it, oh, I fucking freaked out. I freaked out. I freaked too. out. I like. I like. I was like, is that? It's not. Is that? It's I not. Know. It's that. <laughs> it, is it? Is it? Um, so, uh, kill shots like there in the ring, like, oh, I just got killed or whatever. <laughs> and then this guy walks out and ki- and he's in like, he's got like some army stuff on and kill shots looking at him and he's freaking out. And he's like, but you're dead, but you're dead, but you're dead. He literally like, and then I literally did a double take and I was like, no, 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 is it, mm-hmm. is it? And then, uh, kill shot goes in for a hug and then, uh, AR fucking Fox. Yup. <laughs> Takes him out. So excited. What's his name? Do we know his name? I don't think we know his name yet. It's fucking AR motherfucking Fox. I did not know that he was on this season. I didn't know that he I was on Sammy this season. I knew Sammy was on this season, I did but too. I did not know that AR Fox was on this Neither season. Neither did I. And the like the crazy thing is that I like saw AR Fox the, around the time that he was filming this and had no idea. Like absolutely. Yeah, not. we both did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so cool. I'm so good. I'm so I, glad. I love AR Fox. If you guys haven't love seen AR Fox, our, too. AR Fox Remember yet, that like, time when he ran up the fucking ring post and then did a flip on the ground? It was so cool. Oh, uh, he's so good. He is so I fucking good. I cannot wait to watch Killshot and AR Fox. Me too. They're gonna be great. I'm so excited about it. Like, 
Airfax is fucking talented. Killshot is talented. I'm so glad to- it's Killshot. a cool storyline. Yes, exactly. And like, I'm really glad Killshot is being Airfax is featured super in this hot. Way. Oh my god, he's so hot. <laughs> he is so hot. He's so hot. He's so talented. That's the other thing. Ugh. Like, we've seen him a lot. Oh my god, remember he's that at time when we were at AW and we were getting money out of the ATM? And I like looked behind me and, and I was like, and I did a double take and it was Airfax and I went, hi. And he like looked at me really weird and I was like, oh god. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Listen, as someone who's had many awkward exchanges with wrestlers, that is nothing. <laughs> I know, but it felt weird. Yeah. Um, the next match was the trios champs. So it was, they were coming out and they didn't know why. And Dario was like, I have a unique opportunity for you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, so the, they had to fight each other for slot number 20 in Aztec Warfare. Yes. But the two losers of it. We're not, not in Aztec Warfare. Also, Dario told us that uh, Matanza will be number one. Matanza's in, number one, yep. Which is awesome. Like that, That's great. It's smart. It makes a lot of and sense. And it makes sense. It's if awesome. he does lose, it's like, oh, there's like a reason why. Right, exactly. Um, exactly. So four weeks till Aztec Warfare. Um, and uh, uh, Drago won. I thought it was. I, I thought, was really surprised. I thought Aerostar was going to win. I did too. I was like, it's not going to be Phoenix because the way they set it up right. was like Phoenix. And then he got his nose these, broken. Oh yeah, Phoenix got his ass kicked or whatever. And but they were like, I, I really felt like Aerostar, right? I did too. Yeah. It was like going his way, and then boom, Drago got the pin. Yeah, I was very surprised by that. But cool. But, like I think that's good. I think because didn't Aerostar win their series? They're like when Drago and Aerostar had their series. I think, I think so. Aerostar won their series, and Drago. Remember, Drago got kicked out of the temple in the first season. Like, yeah. I think this is good that Drago's yeah. gotten a thing. Yeah, I agree. And also, like, this, people need to get eliminated from Aztec warfare. And like, I don't think Drago's gonna win the whole thing. Right. And like, that it makes more sense for him to be eliminated in the sense of that match as a whole rather than Aerostar. Right. And like. But it was very surprising. Also, Drago's an old man. So, like, that um, was be surprising. Can we talk about the dope backstage segment with Cobra Moon and, and Drago? That Cobra Moon, like, was great. Like, slides up and then in Spanish says, like, I expect you to bring uh, the belts back home to our tribe. And then he, like, growled at her and was like, I haven't been a member of your tribe for, like, 200 years. A thousand years. Did he say a thousand? A thousand years. I, okay, maybe I didn't write I didn't, I didn't write the years down. But yeah, he was like, I haven't been a part of your drive for a thousand years. And then like spit fire and then left. And she just like looked in the mirror like. Mm, mm, mm. So is she not with Daga anymore? I haven't seen Daga at all. In so. like a hot minute. I haven't seen him. He'll be at Aztec Warfare. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe he didn't I mean, sign for season. I mean, they need 20 people. <laughs> well, maybe he didn't sign for season three. We never know. Mm, I don't know. They filmed two and three at the same time, which is what makes me think that he will oh, be okay. part of the season at some point. Um, there was also a backstage segment where Johnny Mundo paid off Dario for a Gift of the Gods title shot. Yes, I loved it. <laughs> he was like, is this my $100,000? And he was like, eh, kind of. It's like ninety nine four. Close. <laughs> I, I had to pay some people off. Oh, yes, the internet photos, which made me laugh so fucking hard because Johnny Mundo, at the time that this was filmed, had those problems with Melina releasing those photos of his Cialis bottle, which I think is probably a nod to that. <laughs> So I particularly enjoyed that. <laughs> That's really funny. I didn't know that. <laughs> um, and then it was the main event with uh, Puma and Mill. I loved how Puma just came out fighting and like started to beat the shit out of him. Yes, absolutely. They have a great rivalry. They really do. I was a little shocked that Mill lost. Yeah, I was too. Definitely. It's in a. It's definitely like he and Katrina are in like this weird. Like they used to run the temple. Yeah. And now they're in this like weird mid cardy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's weird. I'm intrigued to see what's going on with them. Right. And uh, it's also weird, too, because we have a match for Katrina at the end of the year. Right. And, like, it's weird to watch her build for Mill, but not really, because Mill is not actually building, because he's, like, sliding into this mid-card spot. Right. But at the same time, like, the other weird thing about... But they killed that other guy, too. Yeah. And, like, the weird thing about Lucha is that this was filmed in advance, and we do know some things. And we know that Puma... That Ricochet leaves at right. the end of this season, and so it's interesting to see this like maybe Mill like of it. kills him at the end of the season. I don't know. It's weird. Like it sucks his soul out. How he sucked out Sinestro's soul. Yeah, and then he—that's how they live forever, right? 
Like, I guess I think it's pretty. Souls. I think it's like pretty hocus pocus. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, like, the souls out to stay, <laughs> stay young or whatever. <laughs> and then it ended with a backstage segment with Ray. Uh, Ray. Oh my god. Mysterio. Mysterio. <laughs> I want so here's the thing. My Just brain, uh huh. My brain was like, it's Mysterio, but then I was like, no, it's not. That's a dumb name. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, both these things can be true. Ray Mysterio was like, look. I need to kill Chavo Guerrero, or I need to fight Chavo Guerrero. I just want to know that I'm not going to have problems with Matt, with your family. To senior Chavo Guerrero. Well, I was getting there. Oh, okay. Well, they announced his name right at the beginning. They were like, flashcard. Here's who this well, is. Everyone's watched this. Just leave me alone. Just let me tell the story how I want to tell the story. So rude. Rude. How dare you. Anyways, Ray Mysterio was talking to Chavo Guerrero's dad, and Chavo Guerrero's dad was like, whatever, I don't care. Kill my son. Who cares? We're Guerreros. We don't give a shit about anybody. (laughs) We're Guerreros. My family lives on whether or not you beat up Chavo Guerrero or not. One of my sons is already dead. (laughs) That's too far, Aaron. Too far. It's true, though. Too far. All right, anyway. NXT. NXT. Uh, no way, Jose. I love it. They're so Just fun. Dancing up a storm. Dancing up a storm. Can you handle this? No way, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> they beat the shit out of Gulak and Nice. Which I'm fine with. I'm totally cool with. I feel bad for Drew Gulak, though. He's I become like a, a like a uh, jabber, kind of. Kind of, yeah. It's weird, though, because I feel like his... I was talking to Devin about this yesterday. I feel like his... Um, personality and his style fit way better for NXT than they do for Raw. And Raw makes him feel like a jobber. I feel like on NXT, he feels like an equal competitor. That's true. Who just is the one who takes the pin. Whereas on Raw, like, he legit feels like a jobber. That's fair. And it, I just think he doesn't fit the the style of Raw in the way that they're booking the cruiserweights. And that is also, like, tainting the way that I see him on an NXT, even though I think that he fits in that universe a lot better. I agree. It was interesting to see how three wrestlers who are very good wrestlers wrestled with somebody who's still very green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought they did a good job with No Way Jose. Yeah, absolutely. And I also thought that it was smart booking because No Way is so much bigger that, like, that also kind of plays into it where, like, these guys are very good and Jose is not as good, but because he's so much bigger, he has this size advantage that is really allowing him to take advantage of this match. And, like, I thought that they did a great job at the end of the match where, like, Rich Swan is taking care of one person and No Way is taking care of another person. And, like, that that's a great way for them to work as a team. I just got an email for somebody who I really want to do a tattoo and they're going to do my tattoo. Yay! Sorry. I was listening, but I, like, had a feeling. So I wanted to Yay! start my... Yay! That's exciting! So I'm going to be starting a Kickstarter so people can find my tattoo because I don't have any money. <laughs> Ridiculous. I'm not actually going to do that. Um, because that would be a really dick bag move. Yes, it would be. But I know, would not donate to that. We know people who have done similar things. Um, anyways, uh, there's a Ty backstage segment where Ty was like icing his shoulder and he was like, I'm going to get Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode, you've dishonored me. I'm going to... I asked Regal for a match at TakeOver Toronto. So they're going to have a match at TakeOver Toronto. Good. I'm glad. Um, Aries they need had sickles a, matches. <laughs> Aries had a backstage segment with a banana. <laughs> You could ask me about how much potassium is in a banana, but you won't. Scoop <laughs> over the shoulder. <laughs> and he was like, all you need to know about my partner is that he's the greatest and he's strong. I was like, I get it. You're the greatest and he's Roderick Strong. Mm-hmm. We get it. We get it. Um, then we had Bobby Roode versus uh, Maluda. Uh, yeah. Sean. Sean. I was like, you know, the one from the Cruiserweight things. <laughs> that we liked. That was the person who was here. Yeah. yeah he yeah. was great. He did a good job. I, I like seeing him a lot. Because I like that he, they're using him well. Like, he's new, he's green, he I is... mostly just like Bobby Roode's cape. Oh my god, that robe is so good. The way the light bounces off the crystals is intense. I love how Corgars is like, his $30,000 robe. <laughs> and I was like, it's definitely and not $30,000. Tom Phillips goes, that's as much as my house. <laughs> what kind of house do you live in? A shitty house. It's Tom Phillips. <laughs> He and he's Slater. Neighbors. <laughs> Neighbors. <laughs> they share a pool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ty came out and, and him and Bobby got into it and whatever. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I, that's a feud that I'm looking forward to. I'm into it. I think it's great. Because Root is a natural heel. Yes. 100%. Absolutely. I love that he was like, Ty got down on his hands and knees and begged me to be his partner. Which is not true. But he's great heel yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
because he basically was like, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. That's great. Um, and then it was Liv giving a, an interview, and she was like, I don't know. I'm, I'm a baby face, whatever. And then Peyton and Billy just beat her up and then dragged Thank her. You. And then dragged her by the hair out into the, yep. like, arena. And they, it was great until both of them started talking. And I was like, oh, guys. Oh, guys. You guys got to work on your skills. <laughs> okay. For instance. I jam it, I guess. Instead of saying beat up, I think you meant beaten up. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a moment that I was like, okay, guys, I get They're it. Australia. <laughs> it's not anything to do with them being Australian. They're just bad at talking into microphones. True. But I did, I do like that they're this new little like yeah. uh, heel faction, and I like that they called out Asuka. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've heard some complaints that it's like they're a Mean Girls faction, but like that worked for Dana and Emma, and like they're basically just redoing also, that's that thing. Wrestling. And it's fine. There's always yeah. a Mean Girl. Like there's absolutely. always bad. Like bad guys are like that. Yeah, absolutely. There are male bad guys who are like i'm a better wrestler and then there are female bad guys who are like you dress like trash well there are (laughs) bad there are i mean bobby rude that's part of his character he tells everybody that they dress like trash yeah that's true i mean fucking uh cory graves was like some of the people in the audience have started wearing slacks Slacks, because of him he's really classing this joint up that's true and i love that i love that cory graves is like bobby rude makes us classy (laughs) (laughs) Um, then it was Aries. Oh, it was Otis and some guy. It was two big guys. Two big guys. They reminded me a lot One of the, named of the Otis. hooligans from AAW. They don't remind me of them at all because the hooligans are great and these guys are trash. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, True. And then it was Aries and Ratty Strong. Yeah. I like that they gave... I like the the size difference because like yeah. Aries and Strong are like shorter and more compact. Yeah. Um, and these guys were giant and fat. And so it was <laughs> they were. They One were. of them weighed over three hundred pounds. Which is a hilarious say, way to say that. They were just giant and fat. <laughs> they were. Not fat shaming them, they were giant and fat. <laughs> um, but it was cool to watch Aries and Strong and how they like work together yeah. to to take them down. Also, I just fucking People are like, why do you like Austin Aries? I just fucking love watching him wrestle. He's such yeah. a fucking good wrestler. He is a great wrestler. And he's I, a great character. I love watching him. Like, I'm always compelled to watch him. I feel like he also is very good at carrying his character from outside of the ring into the ring. Yeah. And, like, not a lot of people are great at that. And he, like, nails it every single time. Yeah, I agree. Um, then there was a backstage segment with Cien where he was like, Spanish, Spanish, Spanish. And then the girl was like, translate, Fuck translate. You. <laughs> and then he was like, I don't need you to translate. I'm here. I'm putting everybody on notice. I love, too, that he was like, I took off my mask and I do not feel like I, like I was respected. Too. Like, Yeah, like, I, I showed that I'm committed to this company and then I, I've been treated like garbage. Yes, absolutely. I thought that that was great. That was good, yeah. Loved it. Um, and then Nakamura came out and nakamura it around. nakamura hello, I'm charming. Nakamura! So charming. <laughs> I love him. I do too. And then fucking Patrick Clark came out with the worst gimmick oh my in the God. history you of were gimmicks. 100% right. I hate it. I hate everything about it. He doesn't nail, he doesn't under. he fundamentally misunderstands everything about Prince. It's bad. Also, he it's doesn't look bad. like Prince. He looks like Jimi Hendrix. It's, yes, he does. You're totally right. Mm mm mm. We are gathered the way that here today. He tied, no, shut your the mouth. The shirt that he wears and the way that he ties his headband, he looks like Jimi Hendrix and he just tries to talk like Prince but doesn't get it. But it's bad. It's bad. I love that Nakamura looked at him and was like, oh. Bitch, please. And then just like decimated him. Ugh. And I love uh, that Samoa Joe came out to like distract him and he still was like, oh, I can still take care of this chump and have my eyes on you. You think yep. you got one up on me? Nah, no boy. way. Nah, friend. Nah, friend. <laughs> NXT has like slowly been on an uptick. I agree. I feel it's like we were saying. Part of it is that it's developmental, and like every week Did they get better. Did you drink a whole bottle of champagne? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I have this whole glass left. That's an empty ass bottle, though. Uh huh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> all right raw raw the list it was boring <laughs> yeah i fell asleep during, through so much of it the so, list was good though jericho yeah, like, it's was a great dumb story right now like it shouldn't have taken up as much of raw that it did but kudos to fucking jericho in the list for at least keeping that part at least a little bit entertaining Absolutely. like it was dumb and shouldn't have been on it as much but jericho did a really good job i completely agree. i liked 
how committed and how upset he was. Yeah, absolutely. I love that he came out and he was like, I'm so, I'm so sad. I'm just, I'm, I have really terrible news. It's the worst news ever. Someone stole the list! <laughs> perfect. It was perfect. I love it. The matches were Enzo and Anderson. But I like them. I like this feud. Like, there's, there was nothing special about this match, but I like the idea of them feuding together. I like that the, both of those teams are very well matched against each other, and I think both of those teams deserve better than what they've been getting. It was cool. It was a cheap pop, but it was cool when they cut out their microphones, and then they got the entire audience yes. to do their intro for I completely them. agree. That was dope. I also feel like that's a really good, like, yo, Vince, hey, we got this whole fucking place to cheer for us, and they know our whole thing word for word. Yeah. Like, that says a lot about how over they are with the crowd which i think is also important to demonstrate to the backstage so good for them and then it was followed by another tag team match i thought that was interesting looking Mm -hmm. um it was new day coming out and new doing new day and then it was uh cesaro and sheamus Mm -hmm. um cesaro and sheamus won yes Uh, again the same thing that we're talking about nxt i thought they did a good job of one person on the outside one person on the inside dealing with those individual threats and like that's how they work together as a team is that they don't actually work together and i I like that over them disagreeing though i just want them to realize that they they work well but they kind of did that at the end of the match where it was like then they were arguing like i did i did it more no i did it more well that's part of sheamus's character is that he's like that it's boring now i mean i agree it's we'll time. see. Some storylines can be sped up. This yeah. one can be sped up, I think. Yeah. Fair. Uh, this segment in the locker room I thought was really funny with Jericho going in and he was just talking to everyone. I love the moment when he looked at Titus and said, nice scarf. And then he was like, it's Titus brand. He was like, dummy brand. Yes. Just like under his breath. Dummy brand. I liked his interaction with Ginger Mahal too. I was like, you know, I hate what they're doing with Ginger Mahal, but I also really like like that it's... I thought Ginger Mahal did a good job with what he's being given, which is not much and is not great. But I also liked that they did the breathing and Jericho was like, stupid idiot, stupid idiot. <laughs> and like, they, th- like, I would watch Ginger Mahal and Chris Jericho have a match. Like, I think that they could be fun. And like, that's, I feel bad for Ginger Mahal in a lot of ways where like he got brought in under these circumstances and now has this like real shitty gimmick. And I thought that he and Chris Jericho like had a really great interaction. And, like, I don't want them to have a full-on feud Seth Rollins style, but I would watch them have a match and would enjoy it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, It's weird that Titus is, like, the Shining Stars valet right now. It's very bizarre. I love that he's, like, I'm a brand. I'm so great. But I'm terrible, and I lose at everything. (laughs) Like, I kind of love that. Yeah. It's it's Titus brand. Dummy brand. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Then there was a, a segment with Jericho and Steph. Um, where Stephanie was just like, you're going to do your job. Yeah. List or no list. Or you'll be suspended. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. And then there was Bo and Axel. Axel came out and gave a very impassioned speech. You said a bunch of his signs were taken? Yeah, apparently a bunch of his signs got confiscated at security. That's Because it was so like his hometown weird. crowd, so people brought signs to support him, and they I got them. I can't imagine. It's so bizarre. It doesn't make any sense. Is and it just because they want to push Bo? I don't know. It's very confusing. And, like, there's a lot of talk in WWE in the past about how one of the reasons Curtis Axel doesn't get pushed is because he's not popular with fans and he's only a mediocre wrestler. But he helps train The Rock when Rock comes back. Like, he's the one that gets in the ring and, like, helps him rock knock off all that ring rust and he's clearly popular enough with the fans that they're bringing signs that are being confiscated like it's just really bizarre yeah. and like it makes me feel really bad for him like i like curtis axel and like he's a and fucking he clearly, legend son he clearly like you know we've said before that he he helps uh you know get ring rust off of people and he helps train people and he's like the person that not trained but he's the person that they're like okay go get in a yeah, match yeah. With, reacclimates them to yes. being in the ring after they've like, been gone if you let him trust him to do that stuff, like why can't you just like throw him a bone? Yeah, it's really bizarre and it like sucks. It sucks to watch. Like I want good things for him, but he just kind of gets hit over the head every time something happens. It's like, it sucks. Yeah, it does suck. <sighs> and then Bo uh, won. And Bo won again. <laughs> Whatever. I, I do, I will say, I think that, that that feud is a really good low Yeah, and feud. they got a lot of time. Yeah, they did and get it a was lot of time. A, it, I thought it was a pretty solid match. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, so, whatever. It's yeah. weird, but, like, 
Yeah. Good for them. They're getting paid. That's what matters. Jericho got the list back from Braun Strowman. <laughs> I really liked that, actually. <laughs> Sami Zayn's not on the list. He's on page four. Yeah. I enjoyed that. As soon as Braun Strowman said that, I was like, dummy, you didn't read this list. He's clearly on there. Also, like, was there things written on that list? It looked like just like a bunch of fake paper. And I was like, if you guys didn't take the time to fake write names on where we can see the paper. Yeah. I don't. I feel like there's nothing written on the paper, and that pissed Probably me off. Probably not. I would not be surprised It made me that. mad. Like, there are cameras. There are HD cameras. Yeah. We can see. We know. We know those pages that blank. I love that he waited for Braun to walk away, and he was like, you know, have, when you touch my list, you just made the list. Mm-hmm. There was Reigns and Roman, uh, Reigns and Rusev promos. Rusev's promo was great. Was very good. I was really, really I impressed. I think he's getting, uh, he, you know, he's got the cell cheek sex dream bump going. Yeah. <laughs> he's doing a good job. Wait, Rusev or Roman? Roman. Oh, I was talking about Rusev. Oh. His promo was great. <sighs> I hate Rusev. I, I think love he's Rusev. So ugly. <gasps> I honestly don't, how dare you? I honestly don't understand how anybody thinks that thinks that he's attractive. I think he is so what? vile looking. No, his facial hair is terrible right now. No, but overall, I disagree. No. Disagree. This is coming from somebody who, who like actively would like to have sex with John Malkovich, <laughs> and I think Rusev is disgusting. You're terrible. Also, that's terrible. Can you just think about it for a second? First of all, John Malkovich and Dangerous Liaisons is super hot, and second of all, it would be the weirdest sex. Oh, it would be super weird. But also, Rusev is still pretty good looking. No, he's not. <laughs> Ugh, he's garbage. Ugh, you're garbage. Golden Truth, Shining Stars. Who cares? Who cares? Um, literally doesn't matter. <laughs> literally doesn't matter. And then we have the Charlotte and Sasha signing. I was so fussed by all of McFoley in this. Oh my god. Oh, wait, we skipped the Bailey Dana Brooke match. <laughs> oh, I guess we match. Did. Uh, Dana Brooke and Bailey arm wrestled, and the whole crowd said, This is boring. I, I'm very torn about this segment. I think that it was really good heel work from Dana because it, it was obnoxious and like, Oh, you only did this because you can win or whatever. Blah, 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 bloop. But it, like, why? It was dumb. It was dumb dumb like we want to see bailey and dana do something anything have them get in the match and then have dana beat the shit out the of her crowd said this is boring the yeah. whole time. that's bad that's bad and like people love bailey and it, it just it was bad what was the fucking point like there was no women's wrestling on this entire show you know what i didn't even realize that that sucks not a single moment it just blows dana forearmed bailey in the face and that was it. Like, are you fucking kidding? It's ridiculous. Like that, you're in the middle of this women's revolution. You're promoting this match that's like a first time big deal for these women, and you have no wrestling on the go home show. Like, what the fuck? Horrible, 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 horrible. Yeah. And then we get this fucking mansplain to the moon and back segment. Like, what the fuck was this? Even Charlotte and Sasha were looking at him like, what? <sighs> We're over this. How the fuck? We get it. You respect us and you're so excited about the women's revolution. But like, okay, thanks for giving us like, thanks for giving us the like, it's like when people want to be allies. It's not about speaking for people. It's about making room for people to speak for themselves. Absolutely. And so like, thanks for making room and helping us get here. But now that we're here, you need to step back and sit down. This isn't about you. That, that's the thing we, that I, and also like we don't need the hell in the cell speech from you again there are two other hell in a cell matches on this card and we also get it from you every year we get it yeah absolutely. we fucking get it it's you just, lost your ear you walk weird we got it yeah and i'm like yeah those things are true but these women are not going to be allowed to do those kind of things that made you get to this point also nobody is allowed to do those things anymore no nobody and like yeah, okay, this is a big deal, and these women should accept this responsibility, but, like, how the fuck did we make this match about literally everything except the women inside of this cage? Like, it became about the cage and what the cage means. And the then, cage has a soul. And then it became about Mick Foley and about his experience. Or the cage is alive but has no soul. Yeah, and, like, what? No, Who no. Cares? It was just so Sit frustrating. Sit down, Mick Foley. Like, I was on board for a little while where it was like, okay, this is a an introduction into the fact that this is a new thing for these women, but it just went on and and on and on and on like why this is so unnecessary and just felt so patronizing 
And like in the end, did Charlotte and Sasha even lay hands on each other at all? I don't even remember. I was I just even so frustrated. I was so fast. Ugh. Ridiculous. It was weird. And then it then it was followed by um, Brian Kendrick and Rich Swan having a match with TJ Perkins on commentary. Oh my God, TJ Perkins is so bad at commentary. He's like Natalia bad. He is Natalia bad. It, it's bad. It's so bad. Like, oh, girl, get your life together. It is bad. And Rich Swan and Brian Kendrick had a great match and were fun and had a like. I'm so excited. Rich Swan won. <laughs> yeah, but it, but but, but I'm why? I that he won or whatever. But it was followed by one of the most uncomfortable backstage segments I've ever seen. I don't even remember what it was. When honestly. Brian Kendrick went to T.J. Perkins crying and was oh, like, "Oh, and asked him to like let give him me win. the belt." Because uh, when you were homeless, I gave you food and I let you sleep in my house. I really need this. Like, what the fuck? But he was, like, crying. It was fucking weird and, and really like, uncomfortable. I, I don't understand it either because if he does win now, then, like, is the point that it's, oh, well, I let you win. I decided that you could win. Is like, is that where this is going? Like, that doesn't make sense and isn't yeah. good for either of those characters. It like, was uncomfortable. <laughs> Gross. I did not like it. I did not like it either. You didn't like it. I don't Then it was followed by Braun and Sammy where... I like the idea of this fight. Yeah, and I like that they're building to it because Braun yeah, was like, Mick Foley, I thought I told you I don't want any more chums. And then Sammy started to wrestle and then Braun just like fucking walked away. Yeah. He was like, bye, bitch. Mm-hmm. He like threw him into the barricade and was like, I don't got time for you. And Sammy yeah. was like, I'm going to get you. I will get you. <laughs> and then it was followed by um, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, and Jericho. Yes. I thought the match was really oh, no. good. For- That's not what it was followed by. What do you mean? It was followed by uh, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. Oh, skip. Having the Pass. worst segment ever. Pass. Did you hear that Vince McMahon was pissed? Flipped out. Why would you think that a Minnesota crowd would cheer for Goldberg over Brock Lesnar? Right, exactly. Use your brain, old man. You've spent how many years pitting WCW against WWE also like and convincing people that brought or that Goldberg was a selfish asshole who never cared about the business like you think one emotional return is gonna change that like in a video game nah yeah (laughs) so stupid I am really glad though that they had to pay Brock Lesnar for that because it was worthless fucking worthless he literally didn't say anything i think they should probably realize that brock lesnar is worthless he's worthless they have to pay so much money for him and it's just disappointing now and like he's boring he is boring and like i like paul Heyman in many ways for many many reasons but i don't give a fuck about this anymore like i don't also, care his about his matches are boring his matches Remember are his boring wrestlemania match with dean garbage it It was was so bad because brock is lazy and because he can be he gets paid so much money to do so few appearances and doesn't have to put the work in like i i basically want to be like he doesn't have the range that's what it feels like to me where i'm like you're just a piece of shit where like you think that you got this but you don't have the range brock (laughs) i am not into this yeah then it was anyway, followed by yes. the, the main event, which I thought the main event was fun. Yeah, I agree. I thought each of the people got a chance to shine. I liked the double roll-up. I thought it, it was, was weird, funny. but I loved it. it. was, But the whole show was weird, so like yeah. it it made sense for that that particular episode. Yes, I agree. It didn't make sense it overall. It made Seth look strong. It made Seth look strong, but like it made sense for that episode, so yes. like whatever. I agree. And like, I mean, what really was going to happen? What else was going to happen? What else? He can't just pin Kevin. Because then it's like this, right. oh, well, he pinned him now, which oh, means no. Kevin's going to win. And wah, 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 wah. Like, who do you think is going to win? Do you think Kevin or uh, uh, Seth Rollins is going to win the belt? Pass. I don't know either. I, I legit, I, don't, I do not know. Oh, yeah. We didn't even think to call. Whatever. Let's not let's call do, the card. Let's do we this. We still have to talk about SmackDown. Let's just do the three Hell in a Cell matches. Who do you think is going to win each of those? Roman, Sasha, Seth. So you think everyone is going to, oh, oh, except for Kevin. You think that that's the only belt that's going to switch? Yeah. Unless they're really committed to keeping Charlotte's, like, pay-per-view reign. But it's in Boston. Yeah. Which makes me think there's no way that they, like, why? Why would you have sought? Okay. Roman, here's the, Sasha, Seth. Here's but the, only Seth because the other two are going to retain. That's kind of how I feel, too. But at the same time, WWE has done pay-per-views where everyone has retained. So I kind of think everyone is going to retain. Okay. Yeah, fair. Everyone I, retains. Because I also feel like if they 
Sar- Charlotte and Sasha are gonna be first. Like triple main event. Blah, 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 triple main blah, blah, event means balls. It's, it's not what bullshit. main event means. It's me. bullshit. Ugh. It means fuck all. It's such bullshit. We want to come in. When you go on the WWE website really and it, there's there's a poll that says like what match are you most excited for? The women's match is winning. They're the only people on the advertising. Like what the fuck? What do you mean that they're a triple main event? It's so frustrating. But I. <laughs> I also feel like they're going to put Charlotte and Sasha first. And so it's going to be. I don't. I think it's going to be Reigns and Rusev and I, then Charlotte and Sasha. And I then disagree. I think that Vince is going to look bet, at that. Bet, and bet, bet. That we can bet on it. That's what do you want to bet? Uh, <gasps> Sad news. Slims changed their mozzarella sli- sli- uh, they're sticks not recipe. Very good. They're not very good anymore. No, they're not. I had some the other day and was like, I don't oh, like these. It was so disappointing. It sucks because their burgers are so good, but I just can't deal with their mozzarella sticks anymore. And they were so good. I know they were so good. They were like the best in the city, and now they're terrible. <gasps> what do we do? What do we use for our bet? Uh, I know. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Bet. Bet. Um, bet. If anyone has suggestions for bet, obviously tweet at us and let us know. Uh, I don't know ice cream let's Spend. just bet ice cream for now ice cream yeah someone can pick up ice cream for the next week <laughs> uh, all right smackdown uh, oh wait i was gonna make a point real quick Ugh. i'm sorry i'm almost done so are you here's the thing is that i think i'm just gonna done? ignore that uh there uh i i have a feeling that they're gonna put charlotte and sasha first and it's gonna burn everyone out on the other two matches like i just have a that's feeling. what happens with triple main events remember when the girls double main invented uh that's what um, I've been NXT saying. and finn and kevin had to fire or had to follow that fucking no i don't straight. remember that no one remembers that <laughs> That. Nobody remembers that match. Yeah, nobody, nobody talks about that fucking match, even though the belt changed that night and yes. it was like a really big match. Nobody fucking cares. Because, no, 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 no. It's just so frustrating. Okay, SmackDown. Let's talk about SmackDown. Cubs are getting their ass kicked. By how much? Three. Three to zero. Okay. Bottom of the eighth. They're not, winning this, they're not winning this game. Well, it's the first game, so it's fine, I guess. That time, right? SmackDown. SmackDown was great. SmackDown is great. In contrast to Raw, SmackDown is great. Like, really, really good. They're I so like good really, at cal- really like building. incredulous AJ Styles, who is just like, oh, how is this happening to me? My life. I agree. <laughs> James Ellsworth was like, Dean, I want to be in your corner. Please let oh, me. No. And Dean was like, oh, shit, I've created a monster. Sh- sure, sure, buddy. Yeah. Okay, little buddy. Sh- sure. Natty had a moment where she was like, hey, Daniel, I was thinking I should be the leader of the uh, women's uh, team for Survivor Series. And he was like, oh, that's interesting. Nikki also thinks that. Let's have a match, and whoever wins gets to be the leader, and then whoever loses can't be in it. And then immediately we're uh, like, bye, Natty. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> but it was good. Like, yeah. they had a great match. And Nikki, uh, Nikki um, uh, premiered her Fearless Lock. Yes, which I like a lot. I, like... I- I know a lot of people are like, oh, she's just using John Cena's moves. But, like, we talked but about... But it's modified. Yeah, it's modified. And, it's and, and who cares? And also, I want her to protect her neck. I want her to do as much as possible to stay safe in the ring and not do anything that involves her fucking her neck up. And also, like, Brie did all of Daniel Bryan's moves. And I didn't like that because Brie's not great. How dare you? Fuck yourself. Brie is not great. Brie Bella forever. But... <laughs> You can be Brie Bella forever for Brie mode, but Brie in the ring is not great. Anyway, but like Bella Buster. But the like she was very good at Bella Buster. But it, it's like Nikki is better than Brie is, and so I feel like it makes more sense for her to incorporate moves from Dana Bryan and from Cena because like <laughs> sorry. <laughs> because they like you can't pretend like they're not connected. They are right. like they do all of these shows together and they're living in the same house. Like she should be training from these people. It would be really dumb if she wasn't. That's and so I really appreciate that. Also that fucking fearless lock was great. She it was way better job. than any fucking STF John Cena has ever done. Cause he's <laughs> terrible at it. He's fucking terrible at that move. His forearms are too big. And so it's very difficult for him to do the face lock portion of it. Nikki's great at it. Oh my God. You know, what's so funny. We totally glossed over Bray and Kane. <laughs> Oh my god, you're right. LOL. The only LOL. thing that matters in this match is that Randy Orton is a Wyatt. I now? called that motherfucking Maybe. shit. If you can't beat him, join him. Oh my god, as soon as he came out and like 
they they were getting ready. This and has we got to like, be a swerve though, where he like he, <sighs> he like pretends to join the Wyatts and then he snakes them. Although he's been doing all these like my 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 brain is all fucked up and I'm looking in the mirror and seeing all this weird stuff. So I feel like it's possible that it's both, where like he legitimately does join the Wyatt family, but then at the end it's like I was possessed. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah. As long as I don't have to see Bray versus Kane again, I'm fine. Oh my god, right. And uh, honestly, Randy hasn't been interesting yeah. in so long. Like, I, I love Randy's thighs, and I want to see them at all times. And we didn't even get to see those tonight. But we got true. a Wyatt family join, and I'm into that. That's fine. I cool. didn't even get to see his thighs. Right? Like, oh, my God. We had a segment with Ms. Maurice and the Spirit Squad, which the only thing that we really need to talk about that is that how fucking fly Maurice looks. So fly. Ugh. Holy crap. So good. So fly. Maurice forever. And then Dolph Ziggler came out. And it's so funny because my hand, like, tries to fast forward because I don't want to watch Dolph Ziggler. But I'm like, but Ms. Fuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> true. Be true. Um... What else happened? Oh. Becky's back? Yeah, I was going to say, um, also Carmella busted in at the end of the Natty. Oh, that's uh, right. And we were saying, too, like, we were all about Carmella until she started to fight Nikki Bella, which is super <laughs> weird because we used to hate Nikki Bella. But, like, it, it's great character work for Carmella, and I think it's the strongest that she's been the entire time that oh she's God, been on it. Oh, my God, head is so big. Oh, it's that big because I had a braid in earlier. I look dumb in this. <laughs> I think it looks okay, honestly. <laughs> I'll wear it like her. Backwards? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one looks much better. What a... You sort of look like a lesbian. Fearless. <laughs> How rude to pigeonhole what lesbians look like. You're wearing a backward snapback right now, and your hair is down, and you have very minimal makeup on. Like a lesbian. I just want to, everyone to know that Aaron is making really snap judgments about people. Snap judgments? Because I'm wearing a snap. You're back. wearing a snapback. <laughs> Whatever. No, it's because every time You're I hateful. wear that hat backwards, everyone's like, lesbian? <laughs> That's so hateful. You should tell people that they shouldn't say that. Hmm. Puck oh. doesn't like it. Anyways, Becky's back. Becky's back. And Alexa came out in a Sorry Not Sorry shirt because for some so great. ungodly reason, uh, uh, Alexa doesn't have a fucking shirt still. Yeah, I don't know why. She was great. Her whole promo was Fucking or like phenomenal. she was like, Katie Kirk, you can get out of the ring. It was perfect. perfect. Bye. How how perfect to build up heel heat by insulting Renee because everyone loves Renee. So good. I loved it. I'm very excited for their match. I am too. I think it's gonna be great. I'm I, really excited. Becky's back. Yeah. I I love Becky. I love Alexa. I'm super excited about it. I hope that they do something with Naomi and they don't just discard her yeah, after Naomi all this. Naomi was the only one that only woman uh, Naomi and Eva weren't on this week. Yes. But the other five were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still a really good track record. I mean, Naomi's gonna be on the Sur- Survivor Series match. So oh, absolutely. That's also Who do you think good. it's gonna be? Nikki. Uh, Nikki, Carmella, Becky, Alexa, uh, Naomi, Naomi. Yeah. What about Eva? So Natty can't be on it. What about Eva? I think, don't think Eva will be in it. I think Eva will come in and be like, why wasn't I in this? And then Natty will be like, go fuck yourself. And then they'll have a match. That's fair. Yeah. And that, like, that makes sense. I'm into that. There are seven women on this roster that like is a good use of all of them, honestly. So I'm into that. Yeah. Who's going to be on the raw one? Uh, Sasha, Charlotte. Emelina. Emelina. Naya. And. Bailey? Bailey. Yeah, I guess. No Dana then? No Dana and Summer's mm-hmm. out. No Dana, no um, Alicia? Yeah, I don't even think Alicia will get mentioned. I think Dana might have the same kind of thing where she competes in a match and then is eliminated because of that match. Yeah. Maybe it's Bailey and Dana go against each other and Bailey wins. You think Charlotte and Sasha will be on it? Yes. Because. Becky and Alexa are both going to be that's on it. That's true. And Carmella and Nikki are both going to be on it, too. And, like, the, I think that's part of the appeal of these matches is that they're setting up these, uh... Rival- the yeah, these, these, like, feuds and these rivalries within these factions and then forcing them to face each other. And so it's like, we have to get over these or we're going to lose because of these. And then whichever team loses, like, then they can blame it on the rivalries. And Ugh, the SmackDown women's roster has to win. I agree. So I completely agree. I feel like SmackDown needs to win. Okay, Raw should win the tag team Survivor Series. Yeah, but fucking SmackDown should win the women's and maybe even the men's one. <laughs> like yeah. they're just they just build such better stories on SmackDown, and it makes me believe that those people are stronger. Yeah, I agree. 
Sorry, Ra. Do um, better. We had a match with the Ascension and... Oh, we didn't even finish the Miz thing. Rhino and uh, Heath Slater came out. Whatever. Who cares? They have a match with the Spirit what Squad. What we need to talk about fuck. is how good Maurice looked. So good. So good. Um, and they're now called the Odd Couple and not Beauty and the Man Beast because I think they got a bunch of shit because there's an indie tag yeah. team called Beauty and the Beast. Correct, yes. Um, that's my guess. I would agree with that. Um, and then there was tag match with the Hype Bros and the Ascension with fucking Victor has the worst face paint. It's bad. It's like childlike. It's very bad. Very bad. Connor's so was bad. fine. I liked his yeah, face paint. Connor's always been the good one in the group. Yeah, that's true. That's that's one hundred percent a fact. Anyways, hype bros. Hype bros. Oh my gosh. Bros? I just thought of some news that we didn't cover. Oh my gosh. It's about Ryback, but it is him being a dummy. When I think you will appreciate it. Great. So he registered his trademark for Feed Me More while he was working at WWE because WWE dropped it. So WWE filed for a, this basically the same trademark. Ryback blocked WWE's attempt because he was like, this will confuse the marketplace. I own this trademark. So he stopped their bid for this. And now as an independent wrestler, he is refiling for it in a different way. But because he blocked WWE's attempt to get this, his bid to get this trademark is also blocked now. So he like totally fucked himself over and now no one will have the feed me more trademark. Good. Basically, unless WWE drops their suit or Ryback files like completely different paperwork, that it, it'll just never go to anybody. What so he like ass. basically fucked himself over. That came to my brain that we did not talk about that earlier. Anyway. What a dumb dumb. What a fucking dumb dumb. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. It was like a total derailment. And then there was the main event with Dean and uh, AJ Asia with Sass. Ellsworth in Dean's corner. Yes. Um, typical match. They look good. They're both like going toe yeah. to toe. It's who's going to win, who's going to win. And then Ellsworth gets involved and no chin music. Uh, AJ Styles. AJ which, Styles hits him with the drop kick out of the ring. And so, like, I like the way that they set it up where it was like, AJ earned this. He definitely deserved to be kicked in the face. But Ellsworth was dumb enough to do it when the ref was looking right at it. I love that that ref, I, I don't know what his name was. I don't remember what, which ref it was. But it was like, what the fuck, dude? I'm looking right at you. Like, why would you be so stupid? It was just a great moment for And then him. Dean was like, no! He didn't mean to! He didn't mean to! <laughs> so uh, AJ won by uh, disqualification. disqualification because yes. James Ellsworth got involved. Dummy. Dummy. Yeah. Are we done? I think that's, yeah. I think mean, that's it. Well, I just meant because we did dummy, yeah. Oh, yes. I, it's almost 11 o'clock tonight. I really, can we just pass on questions and we'll get to them next week? Yeah, it's fine. I'm sorry if you have like a burning question. It's just, we're tired. It's late and we're tired. Tired AF because we watched SmackDown first. Uh, yes. Mistake. So you can find us on the internet. I'm at Stella underscore chicks. I'm at Earned on C. You can follow us on Tumblr at notyourdemographic.tumblr.com. You can send us some questions at notyourdemo oh, this is at bad. gmail.com. We, we need to stop. <laughs> questions at notyourdemo at gmail.com. You can find us at kchitesseats.com. <laughs> also, please leave us a review on iTunes and rate us. We haven't gotten a new review or rating since... Sometime. Since September. <gasps> That's only a month. I'm such a brat. But still, September 14th, so it's been more than a month. Please give us a review. I need it. Please. <laughs> um, yeah, please. Because it would mean a lot. And then we're also on KHIT Seats, which is like a rad website. So like go there and then listen to us and click on a bunch of stuff so they get paid more. Yeah. I think that's how blogs work, right? Yes. The more clicks you get, the more money you get. Yeah, exactly. That's probably right. I agree. I don't know. Internet. Yay. Anyway. Uh, that's it. I think that's it. Dummies. Yeah. Oh, that's how we should do it. Like, I'll say it, then you say yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Should we do it again? Nah. Okay. <laughs> Glorious. No, I won't give in. All I can think of is Kristen What's Her Face. From yep, with the Kristen Day. What's Her Face. Uh, Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. 
Safeway Gas Rewards are now even better. We've partnered with Sunoco to give you more locations to redeem your points. Shop at Safeway, earn rewards, and save at Sunoco. Use your club card and get Coca-Cola, Pepsi, or Canada Dry six packs of 16.9-ounce bottles, five for $10 when you buy five. Tombstone or Red Baron Classic Pizza selected varieties three for $9. Safeway, it's just better. Maximum gas reward is 20 cents per gallon at participating Sunoco stations and $1 per gallon at participating Safeway stations in a single fill of up to 25 gallons. Other restrictions and exclusions apply. See complete details at Safeway.com. That isn't just the sound of the all-new 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLC being put through its paces. It's the sound of innovation. The innovation behind one of the most advanced SUVs on the road today. With multiple driving modes, a suite of intelligent drive systems, and a technology-filled cabin that sets new standards in modern luxury. This is what innovation sounds like. Now, discover what it feels like in a 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLC. Some equipment described as optional.